Okay, so I want to talk about tabloid journalism, Hillsborough, and hypocrisy. Those are sort of the three subjects I'll be covering in this video. Um, regarding Hillsborough, I'm not going to say a great deal because I honestly don't think there's a great deal I can add that hasn't already been said out there. Um, to my international viewers, I'm referring to a very notorious tragedy that took place in 1989 at the Hillsborough Football Stadium in Sheffield in Northern England. Uh, there was a match, a fixture between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest and a tragedy happened and I was the first time it occurred. And the circumstances of this tragedy have long remained uh, very controversial um, because for many years uh, it's widely been perceived that the truth hasn't been told by the authorities. And Basically, this is once again in the news, uh, partly because it's the 27th anniversary, but also because um, the latest findings have determined that fans have, have been cleared of all wrongdoing. Um, and basically, they've been slandered for almost three decades. Uh, there have been Liverpool MPs have campaigned vigorously and family members to have the truth be told. Andy Burnham is one of the MPs who's been campaigning for this. Um, on the other hand, is South Yorkshire Constabulary, South Yorkshire Police, um, and the Sun newspaper, which today is deeply despised in Liverpool for their coverage of this event. At the time, the Sun had a very notorious headline, which basically read the truth in big bold letters, and then went on to say that basically football hooliganism was to blame for this disaster. In the 1980s, football hooliganism was a, was a major problem in this country, so it was a very convenient thing for the then editor, Kelvin McKenzie, to write. Now, he's always defended himself by saying that he was using uh, first-hand sources from Liverpool, but those who provided those sources say that he has embellished this. Um, a few years back, he did make an apology and said he, that he would have... Um, worded this differently the way the rest of the press have done but needless to say that hasn't um, brought any comfort to the families who have basically been slandered for years. Um, there was a range of problems that caused the disaster. The findings have established that by basically letting the um, letting more people into the stadium that was already overcrowded that's what caused the disaster. So contrary to fans acting like hooligans and um, causing violence or so on, what actually happened was overcrowding and it seems to me that what should have happened and you know this is coming from someone who has no personal relationship to the tragedy so I want to be very careful about how I say this but it seems to me that what should have happened to the, on the day is the authorities should have turned away the extra fans and said sorry this is full capacity you just have to go away um, there was no procedure put in place to deal with that sort of overcrowding and it was a tragedy waiting to happen. Um, obviously the reporting of the event and the, the denials from South Yorkshire Constabulary and, and the stance that the Sun has taken in this has caused deep, deep anger over, over the years. Um, and there's also political consequences because Margaret Thatcher, who visited the stadium the following day, her press officer, Get the guy's name, but he he basically took the line of the, um, I think it was Bernard Ingham actually. He said completely had a completely callous attitude towards the victims ever since, and in his words, they were tanked up jobs. Um, this is like basically kicking people when they are down, and it is utterly despicable to slander victims of a major tragedy in this way. People who have lost their brothers, their sisters, their children, um. It's one of the most harrowing events to take place in this country in modern times. By far a worse sporting event, although a few years before there'd been the Bradford City fire, which killed 56 people. But like I say, there's not much more I can add that hasn't already been said about the tragedy itself. But I do want to talk about one thing which I've just watched. Um, Channel 4 News, which is has a reputation for being a little bit different than other news sources. Alex Thompson of Channel 4 News actually approached Kelvin McKenzie on his doorstep. Um, McKenzie was very hostile about this. Um, and basically, he wanted to approach him to see if this would be, if he would make any further statement 
He'd already apologised, but he refused to do any interviews to explain why he made this decision at the time that he did. Subsequently, I think he has made more statements on it, but anyway, uh, Mackenzie took a very hostile approach and basically told Alex Thompson to, to go away and he wasn't going to make any statement and and so on. Now, generally speaking, I would say harassing someone on their own doorstep is going too far, but I think it has to be pointed out the incredible rank hypocrisy of both Kelvin McKenzie and tabloid editors in general. Um, and at this point, I'm not going to talk so much about Hillsborough because, like I say, that's already been well documented. But the fact of the matter is, tabloid editors and tabloid industry employ paparazzi to stalk celebrities and to basically ram cameras in their face at every given opportunity. Now, it's interesting, therefore, when the tables turn and the spotlight focuses on tabloid editors, they can't hack it. So Kelvin McKenzie is playing the victim and saying, oh, I'm being persecuted here. But this is exactly what tabloid editors do. They employ paparazzi to to do this to celebrities. So some people might say that Channel 4 is being unprofessional. But as far as I'm concerned, it's McKenzie getting a bit of his own medicine. Um, that's how it feels. Um, but that's the attitude they always have when the phone hacking thing was going on. Uh, again, they played the victims and they were like, oh, we're martyrs of a free press. The rank hypocrisy of these people is astonishing. Mackenzie, in my opinion, personifies everything that's wrong with the tabloid press. Um, the man is basically uh, behaves like an East End gangster. Anyone who questions him, he gets in their face. And he, um, There was an interview there with Chris Bryant, the Labour MP, and Mackenzie was just squaring up, off to him and pointing his face and this is pure, this is how the tabloid industry works. You know, um, The Sun especially, as well as being known for their astonishing arrogance, they have used bully boy tactics against other newspapers. They've literally threatened, for example, the editor of The Independent for taking a, a critical line in the phone hacking thing. And it's just despicable. This is tabloid culture to a T. So... Their apologies count for exactly jack shit, to be quite frank. This is a culture based on dishonesty, based on sleaze, based on callousness. It's a culture based on bullying tactics. So it's the same with Rupert Murdoch when he expressed regret. The reason I don't believe any apology from any tabloid editor is because the culture never changes. An apology should be sincere. It should be a sincere effort to change the fundamental culture. Now, there's been virtually no efforts to do that. Tabloid culture continues exactly the way it did before phone hacking. And um, I would argue it hasn't changed that much since Mackenzie ran that notorious headline. They still come out with extremely reckless headlines. They still play judge, jury and executioner, based on scant evidence in many cases. Um, the, the basic culture of tabloid journalism just doesn't change so that to me means that their apologies mean absolutely nothing that's why i just don't buy it when rupert murdoch made his apology to phone hacking victims because the culture just doesn't change now okay they may they're clever enough to change one or two things but the fundamental culture doesn't change and i'll give an example of this if they slander someone a public figure on or even a private figure for that matter on the front page of the sun and they get it wrong they will apologize but they will apologize in small lettering on page 30 so there's no proportionality whatsoever the arrogance of these people is incredible and this is why i basically hit i hit the tabloid press i believe honestly they're one of the most detrimental problems we face as a country and people are kind of deluded into believing this is the price of a free press. I don't accept that. I believe that we can have a free press that basically enforces some level of responsibility. At the moment, we don't have that because when politicians do try to propose this, then they're accused of wanting to rein in on a free press. Now, to be clear here, I don't want a situation like Turkey where journalists are arrested for offending the president. That would clearly be outrageous. But I sincerely believe 
that in both the UK and the US we have worked way too far with press freedom. Because basically tabloid editors act like gangsters, they act like Al Capone, they, they can, they're basically untouchable. And it, it sickens me to be quite honest. I'm not saying if they commit, uh, you know, if they violently attack someone or something, they're not going to be arrested. But the culture of tabloid journalism basically is enacted with impunity. This culture continues. It doesn't change. And I think it's sickening, to be quite honest. And it's not just Mackenzie. You know, he, he probably has faced more pressure than any other tabloid editor, but they're all the same. I don't think there's much difference between the fundamental culture. I mean, when Rebecca Brooks was under investigation, the press was referring to her as ethics girl. That is a complete oxymoron. She's a tabloid editor. It's a complete oxymoron to suggest that there could be ethics in the work of a tabloid editor. It's just a contradiction in terms. Because these people employ paparazzi to stalk people. And if you say, oh, well, so they're just celebrities, so what? Really? So you're saying that because someone is successful in acting or singing, they deserve to be stalked? Look at the experience of Sienna Miller being stalked by 27 male paparazzi. She's testified to this with the phone hacking inquiry. Now you could say, oh, she's just an actress, but I absolutely take her side. And that's just one example. I just don't accept that because someone is successful as an actor or a singer, they deserve to be stalked. Because there's a huge difference between giving an interview on the red carpet and having someone outside your house at 5 a.m. in the morning sho shoving a camera in your face. So I have to say, usually, I wouldn't condone of anyone being questioned on the doorstep that way. But on this occasion, I view it as a tabloid editor getting a case of his own medicine. I mean, the, the I say the culture hasn't changed because paparazzi are still employed in this country. And the laws regarding this are very vague. They do have anti-harassment laws, but there's nothing that says actually being a paparazzo should be illegal. In my opinion, it should be treated exactly the same way as being part of a gang and engaging in criminal behaviour. Paparazzi are basically stalkers. That's what they are. They're not journalists. They're criminals. They're thugs. And if I was a public figure, I honestly don't know if I could keep my patience with them especially if I had a young family and I felt that they were threatening my children and my and my loved one. You know, I would, um, don't know if I could keep patient with them. So yeah, um, maybe people watching this thought I was going to talk a lot about Hillsborough. Apologies if you thought that, but honestly, there's already been a lot said that, uh, about that. I think it's disgraceful the way the Hillsborough families were treated, but like I say, that's already well documented. I just wanted to give an another angle to this. I don't believe that tabloid journalism has changed its fundamental culture. And it's just completely um, odious. I mean, in some ways, the only thing I'll say about Kelvin McKenzie is he's sort of the poster boy for tabloid sleaze. That doesn't mean that other tabloid editors should get off the hook. The only problem I have with so much focus on McKenzie is that it kind of lets others off the hook. I mean, the likes of Trevor Kavanaugh, um, Dominic Mohan, and basically the rest of them is just as bad. It's the same fundamental culture. They're no better than Kelvin McKenzie. So to me, this is one of the biggest problems facing our country. But anyone who says that is going to be accused of oh, being pro-dictatorship or being anti-freedom of the press. I sincerely believe we've taken this concept of freedom of the press way too far because freedom of the press basically means that these tabloid editors can employ paparazzi to stop people. That cannot be right. 